Decorating Pages is a podcast dedicated to taking you behind the scenes of the designs of your favorite TV shows and films. Each episode, I'll be sharing design stories from some of Hollywood's most famous sets. Interviews from set decorators, production designers, directors, and actors about creating the look of TV and film, about their design inspirations, and stories that take sets from page to screen. Hello, and welcome to Decorating Pages. I'm your host, Kim Wanup. Again, I know, it's been a long time. I wasn't planning on taking this uh, last month uh, hiatus from the podcast, but I can't even tell you how busy my show American Crime Story Impeachment has been. I basically only had two days off in November, and I wrote a whole episode on how decorating in the pandemic is insane and all of production and shows shutting down for people testing positive and working with all the restrictions and all that jazz and it just sounded like one big bitch fest and I didn't think that you would really want that. I mean, I'm sure there's camaraderie in that. I'm sure you feel the same because it's hard on everyone, but it just wasn't, I don't know. You know, I sit in my car uh, when I drive a lot for work and I think of, oh, I should say this and that would be good. And I got to get this person. Oh man, remember that movie? I wonder where that person is. Um, I wish I could just record (laughs) part of this podcast in my car. I'm telling you, it'd be good. Um, But it's just been a lot. And so the podcast kind of got shoved to the back because I'm moving and I have twins and you know all this. And so I got a little busy, but I'm back and this will be the final episode of the year. And uh, what a year it's been, huh? How about it? I, uh, I can't believe really when I look at these names of people who I interviewed this year. I mean, I am insane. In fact, this episode is about... The five tips that I'm going to give on how to get into Hollywood and my story and little things that I did to uh, weasel my way into this uh, industry. I believe it's still relevant, although it's 20 years later. But uh, yeah, I, I, it's funny because I look at the names of people I interviewed this year and I use the same tactics. I kind of do. I'm not going to, not going to lie. So uh, I hope you enjoy this. And obviously, for people who are in this business, it's probably a good little thing of, hey, I did the same thing, or I never thought of that, or a duh, of course you did that. So uh, it might not be tailored to people who actually work in this crazy little world, but um, it is the number one email I get throughout the years. How did you do it? How, how, do, how can I do it? How can I get in? How can I do this? So um, there was a time when I really thought, oh, I have these tips or I have this story and I could probably put together a little e-class and maybe, you know, I could charge for that or whatever. But guess what? I don't have any time left. <laughs> I don't have a minute to spare in my life. So I'm not doing all that. I'm just giving all this info out for free because I don't have time for this shit. I, I got, I got so much to do. You have no idea. Moving and renovation and, uh, a show that is insane that I've never had a (laughs) one-liner to distribute to my crew. Uh, yeah, that's how it's going over there. So here, uh, I don't know. I, I should say uh, to anyone thinking about getting into this business, an art director, Mindy Rothman, uh, told me a very long time ago, don't do it. Don't do it. I've been in this business for so many years. It never changes the bullshit. It's hard. It's draining. You know, your family, your priorities. It's hard. Don't do it. And I was like, wow, what a downer. But she was kind of right. It's not for everyone, and it's really hard. 
sometimes and it's really hard to juggle family and priorities in your life and it's a lot of early mornings I'll tell you that but uh, I, I think of her often <laughs> in telling me not to do it but I do love it um, I do care about every tassel and every sconce and even though I might say like oh just put it up there I don't care I do and um, it's unbelievable to me that I've made it this far and that I Hopefully, I'm just sharing these stories of other designers and, you know, giving something back to my industry. That was the whole point of this podcast was to be able to shine a light on us and how hard it is and how cool it is, really. So, yeah. What's one up watching? Well, in the last month, I've watched a lot, people. I just yesterday finished I Hate Susie. It's on HBO Max. Oh, it's an uncomfortable black comedy that is pretty good about an actress who has some um, personal photographs, uh, you know, stolen off of her phone and just the whole process that she has to go through. And it's really uncomfortable to watch. Um, it was good. And it's set in England and, the you know, these cool little cozy sets and I'm sure just all locations from what I could tell. Um, but I thought it was really funny. I love a black comedy. I, I, I love being uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, finished the Mandalorian this week. I mean, that ending, that ending people. Come on. Who saw that coming? No one. No one. It was good. Cannot wait for season three. I really wish they would just give it. I don't, I don't need to be divvied out week by week. I've said this before. I'm an adult. Just give me the whole season. I can, I can take it. I can pace myself. Um, which is, again, we finished, uh, we finished the right stuff also. And, um, so that, that was so good. And I, I can't wait for season two of that either. I thought it was beautifully done. The sets were gorgeous. I heard it's moving to Los Angeles. There's a little tip for you. Uh, I haven't finished Fargo. I just, I'm not really into the story, but I'm going to finish that over this little hiatus. I zipped through the season of Big Mouth. I love Big Mouth. It's so raunchy. It's so, I don't know. I think it's so funny. It's uncomfortably funny sometimes because it's so <laughs> perverse. It's so gross, but it's like, it makes me laugh. I don't care. And then we just started The Flight Attendant, which is also an HBO Max I really like it. I like that this music is constantly going and your heart beats constantly up. I don't really like Kali Coco, whatever. Um, the sets are beautiful. I would love to get killed in that hotel room. So um, really kudos to uh, to the design team on that. And, uh, and also a uh, shout out to the design team on The Undoing. That really captured like New York upper crust. I loved Donald Sutherland's apartment. I just loved it. I loved the undoing ending, eh, but I thought it was pretty good. So yeah, <laughs> I've also, you know, I've got housewives to zone out to. And if I could start a podcast about housewives and just talk about that, I would. This season, the new Salt Lake City housewives are so crazy. I can't, I, it's, 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 it's another level. I can't even, I, uh, it's so good. It's so crazy. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's my downtime watching all these great shows. So, here's my story. I graduated college in 1999. And I was going to, believe it or not, go to Germany and work in an interior design firm as an intern for a couple months. How did you get that, Kim? Well, I uh, come from a family who people who work in the casino. My dad was a pit boss. My mom was a cocktail waitress. I was a casino dealer. Yeah. For four summers between college like you know between freshman and sophomore year blah 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 and uh one of the players uh that was like 
my dad's uh, friend, whatever, um, said, you know, I have this, I don't know, they get talking, you get talking to people, and he offered it to me. And so in prep for leaving college, I didn't really look for a job. I really just thought, oh, I'm going to go do this. This is crazy. But what an opportunity. And I literally got to like May, end of May. And the guy emailed me back and was like, oh, I'm so sorry. (laughs) We're not doing the internship this year for some reasons. And I was just like dumbstruck of like, oh shit, what am I going to do? I don't have a job. People have been, you know, interviewing, you know, out of college. And I went to um, Philadelphia College of Textiles and Sciences, which the year I graduated changed their name to Philadelphia University, PU. And it was a, it's a great college, has a great reputation for design and architecture and textiles. And, and it is now called Jefferson University, which I don't go for, but it, um, it was stunning. Like I had nothing. And so my boyfriend slash fiance was a film, uh, major at Montclair state and said, I'm moving to California. I, I want to go work in the television business. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. Uh, we'll meet up after Germany. And so he moved out here on his own. Good for him. He had a couple of friends. And so June rolls around and I don't know what I'm going to do. I start looking to interview places. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to move to LA and try to get into the film business. And so I did. And I moved out here with $3,200 and um in a little i moved in with him in a little studio apartment on schrader between the gay and lesbian center and the ymca it was before hollywood and highland it was so dangerous <laughs> uh it's one of those things i can't believe my parents let me do it but who knew it was so bad until you got here and uh we had visited like uh, the spring before and and he had a cousin out here also and it so it helped a little bit that we had been here before together and so honestly I don't remember what job he got but oh he started working for New Line as PA he got a job like kind of right away let's say like six weeks in it took me eight weeks to get a job and what I did was this I was very diligent in sending out faxes yeah, faxes, um, to art departments. And I would send out faxes at least three to five a day. And I'm not kidding. If I change the font on my fax, on my resume, I would send it out again. I was super like, I got to get a job. I got to get a job. Because one thing was I knew if I didn't get a job, my parents would make me move back. So that was number one. Number two, run out of, I mean, I had money. But like, I don't really have money. That was all the money I had in my world. I cashed in my, you know, my bonds from my christening. You know what I mean? So here's what I did. I would take the Hollywood Reporter in the back page. They used to have all the productions that were up and running and um, pre-production and in development and stuff like that. And I would fax to those numbers my resume with a cover sheet, um, you know, to the art department, to the production designer, to production. And sometimes I would fax a resume to production. I would fax a resume to the art department. So that was number one. Number two, I would use the production weekly, which is still going on. The Hollywood Reporter, I looked up online. It doesn't look like they have that anymore. Like if you go way down and it goes and it says like jobs or careers, I think jobs, um, it, it takes you to a page and all the jobs are like visual people, like making video games or something. So I don't know if they post production jobs anymore. I couldn't find it on their website. But I did look up the productionweekly.com and they are still running and they have everything that's going on right now. They have the information of every production office, all of their, uh, I guess it has, I didn't subscribe, but... <laughs> I have emails or phone numbers to call. So at the time I called, can I send a resume in? 
yeah, here's the number to fax. I'd fax it over. The other thing I would do was, I cannot remember the name of this book that we had. He got some book and it had every production printed in it. It was crazy. Like every, uh, I'm going to use the example of ER because I know that I did this for real. It had ER, NBC, Univers- or, you know, NBC and blah, blah, blah. And there are, you know, Warner Brothers and this is the address and this is the production office number and this is the fax number. It was crazy that they would give, now not everything had that much info, but most did. So here's what I would do. And here is my secret thing that I did. I had the number to all of the lots. So let's just say you have the number to WB, which is like 818 blah, 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 blah. You call it WB. Um, ER, please. Connecting. They connect you to ER. They're going to answer the phone and they're not going to say, hi, this is ER. Can I help you? Every production is going to say, production. And you say, hi, can you connect me to the art department, please? Hold on. They connect you to the art department. Now you are in connection to the art department. That's what you want, if that's what you want. Or you could say props, or you could say whatever you want. They connect you to that department. When you get a hold of that coordinator, you then say, Hi, my name is Kim Wanup. I'm wondering if I could send a resume over. I'm looking um, for a PA job or coordinator. Now, you don't want to say that because that's kind of like their job, whatever. And they'll say, oh, we're already staffed up. And you say, I, oh, I'm sure you guys are, but if you ever get busy, could I please just pass my resume on to you or the designer? And then just be quiet. Just let them give you the fax number. <laughs> let them give you the email address. Let's update this for you to send your information over. Because here's the thing. They might be staffed up. I'm staffed up right now. But I also have someone who's leaving in my department and I got to find someone to replace them. Have I looked in a drawer of resumes? Kind of. Have I looked at like, oh, somebody emailed me uh, recently about needing a PA job and then that? Yes. So do it. Just any way you can get your email, get your resume to the art department coordinator or the set decorator, the production designer, the art director, get it to anyone. If you know someone's name working on that, ask to be connected to them. Why not? We'll take a call. Somebody's gonna, the balls of someone to call me at the production office? Cool, man. Kudos to you. I'll take your call. So that's really how I got into a job, honestly. Um, one of the first things I interviewed for was the show Angel. And I got the interview. I went to Paramount, got interviewed in one of the bungalows. Like I was so like, oh my God, I'm on the lot. I didn't get the job because I didn't have any experience. Okay, well, I can't get experience until you hire me. Um, in the hundreds of resumes I sent out, I sent a resume to like kid, like Saturday morning kids shows and... I got a call. I interviewed there. It was, it's now ne- the Netflix lot um, over off of Highland and Bronson. And I went for the interview and they were like, you know, you don't know anything. And I was like, I know I don't know anything, but I can do everything. I can do it. I know I can do it. And the greatest thing about this peewee little shit show that I got a job on was I got the opportunity not to even to work in the art department, but I was the office PA and a, and a set PA because it was such a small show. We did both. There was three PAs. I was the bottom. <laughs> I was the last year. I had to be in at 7 a.m. with bagels, okay? I had to go pick up at Noah's on, on Largemont. With bagels, be in at 7, even the writer, nobody came in till 10. I don't know why I had to be in at 7. Answer phones, nobody's calling And then I was like, Friday's last one out. And I would have to wait till every, the writers were done with their draft on Friday. 
print it out, collated, whatever. Then I, this is the days of delivering scripts. I would be out delivering scripts till like one, two in the morning and throwing scripts over people's balconies, waiting for doors to open of apartment buildings that I couldn't get into, like driving up to uh, Brentwood to the executive producers, put it on his doorstep. I mean, I could do my route right now. I knew uh, the worst was like, oh, if you had to go to the director, he was all the way in Glendale. It was so unsafe. It was me and my Thomas guide and my Saturn. And it was, but it's how I learned the city. It's really how I learned uh, Los Angeles. So every job you have, everything you do, you're going to learn from it. You can think this is the shittiest show. This is just a joke. You're going to learn from that. You're going to learn what not to do, maybe. You're going to learn from every position you have. So after that, you just start sending out more resumes or the show ends or you you meet other people and you just got to keep at it. So this brings me to my top five tips of how to get into Hollywood. Number one, be persistent. Keep at it. You got to send out those resumes. Look at what, you know, is crewing up on these trades. You know, in development might be a little too early, but the art department comes in early, so you never know. So send a resume anyway. I mean, people might be bringing in more people if it gets really busy. Just always try to get your information in there. That's all I can say. Be persistent. And... Uh, Number two, always be networking. Join the SDSA. There's an ADG internship. The Television Academy has internships. FITM has production design classes or AFI. You never know who you are going to be standing next to at a party that you will make a friend with or keep a contact with. And 10 years later, you're working on the same show. I'm telling you, it happens. You're going to get this little cluster of friends when you first live here and go in all different directions. I mean, I had friends who went to be agents. I have friends who went to be DPs. I have friends who moved out and moved back and hated it. So you just never know down the line where you're going to need, oh, that guy that I met, that one party or like at this event, he worked product placement. Let me hit him up. You never know. So just always be networking. Hi, my name is, just do it. Just get out there. I'm telling you, you never know who's going to say, hey, yeah, I need a PA or my friend needs a PA. They're just starting up this gig. It happens. I'm telling you. Number three, stalk. Stalk people. That's how I did it. I stalked Phil Tulin. I got a job with Phil Tolan. I stalked Paul Eads. I got a job with Paul Eads. I'm telling you, it worked. I've had people lightly stalk me, thank you very much. And it worked. I hired a couple of them. Some of them were creepy. Didn't worry you. No. <laughs> um, I would say this. Pick three or five people that you love their work, that inspire you, and just start looking them up. All our information's out there. Most of us have websites, Instagram accounts, DM people, Facebook them. I don't know. Ask them questions uh, about specific shows. Um, and then, you know, explain your situation and be bold. Ask, hey, if you ever had time, I would love to just chat with you. Um, I'd really like to get your perspective on like, you know, trying to get into this business or what I can improve on to get my skills up there to be hired. Um, and you know, I was, I even said like, can I see your sets? People want to show their shit off. Go see their sets if they have time. I mean, COVID and everything that puts a real damper on it, but you never know. Uh, Yeah. You probably can't see sets right now. That was probably, that's not a good tip, but eventually you could. Um, my next tip, I would say, accept any job, take a PA on set, take a PA in the office because every position you get, you will learn from and learn who does what and why. 
and that is invaluable. You start as an art director, you're not going to know what this grip, the rigging grip does. You got to learn what people do so that in this whole, you know, spokes of a wheel, you know how the wheel turns. You got to have a grasp on what your department does and what other departments do and respect them and call them out on shit too. That's not me. That This is your responsibility. This is my responsibility. Get off my sack. These are things I say all the time. So <laughs> taking jobs in different departments will help you. I promise. And I'm telling you this right now. I separated sour balls. This producer, he didn't like purple sour balls. I had to separate them out of a bowl. So God forbid he wouldn't put his hand in and grab a purple sour ball. I am not lying. Same thing Hershey Miniatures. He only wanted special dark. Okay. Uh, whatever. It was a job. I did it. I've picked up dry cleaning. I've picked up dog shit. I've done everything. Don't be too high on your horse. We all started here. And I'm telling you, you got to start at the bottom so that you can learn. It sucks. We all did it. Get over it. We all did it. And the people who didn't do it, you'll see. You'll see the people who didn't do it. I mean... Uh, you have to take these assistant jobs to learn the ins and outs of the departments. You got to learn script dis- distribution. You got to learn like who get what who gets what drawings in the art department. Ask to sit in on a production meeting or, or you know be be in the art department meetings. Just accept any job and grow from it. I would say this. PA if you're on a P, if you're in a show I would say a year or like one season, two tops, you got to move up. You got to usually move out to move up. You got to go to another show. It's very hard to promote within. Now, it might be a little easier with the industry being so busy. And now we need an assistant art director. And now I need a buyer. But you still got a whole union and all that to go through. So, you know, that's, that's hard. Okay, last tip. Fake it till you make it. Do you know how many times I have said, uh-huh, sure, cool, yeah, yeah, I got that, yeah, no problem. And then I turn around and look it up or have to look in the script or like frantically call a buyer of like, oh my god, I forgot that they need a coffee set up. I mean, just fake it till you make it because people want to work with confident and competent people. I cannot stress that enough. I want to be able to turn to my PA and tell them to Look up something and not see fear. Fear, once I see fear, I'm out. Uh, uh, That's why I took so long to find someone to be with in my life. Fear, I'm out. Be resourceful. Be able to problem solve. Be able to figure it out. I'm telling you, it's invaluable. If I'm asking somebody to do something, it's because I have a million other things to do. Otherwise, I do it myself. So feeling confident that it will get done helps my whole process. Be self-sufficient. Be a self-starter. I'm telling you, it will get you rehired. Confidence and competence. (laughs) You will be surprised how many people you come across in this business, and they're neither. Yeah, shocking. I have always been absolutely floored of how many people fail up in this business. It's not funny. How are they higher and making more money than me? They're idiots. And I hate to say it, but, you know, there's situations which make me come to that conclusion. So let's recap a little bit. Be persistent. Always be networking. Stalk, lightly stalk. Let's, uh, let's put lightly in front of that. Lightly stalk. Accept any job and fake it till you make it. And my little phone trick. I feel like that, I mean, that's how I got jobs. So, or that's at least how I got my resume out there. <laughs> Um, so I hope this helps. Um, I hope you get jobs. I hope to work with you one day. How about that? Um, yeah, good luck with that. I have some interviews lined up in the next week while I'm off. I, um, hesitate to say who they're with because you never know. And then I hate to like promo something and then it doesn't happen and it's happened before and I feel bad. But the... 
Art Directors Guild nominations are coming up, so hopefully I'll be chatting with some of those nominees. Uh, I hope you got an earful this year. Thank you so much for listening in this surreal 2020. Um, I've been completely inspired um, and rejuvenated, I would say, by the people that I have gotten to interview this year, and I hope you have too. Um, here's hoping to a better 2021. So happy new year. Stay safe and stay healthy. Float into the new year on a Stogie Floaty. Available now on Etsy and stogiefloaty.com. Welcome to Pro Tips for the Pros, brought to you by Floor and Decor Bailey's Crossroads. In this series, we'll explore essential advice for professional contractors to deliver outstanding renovation results. Let's dive in. Before starting any renovation project, take the time to plan meticulously. Assess the customer's needs, budget, and timeline to ensure a smooth and successful renovation process. Thank you for joining us for this pro tip on planning thorough renovations. Stay tuned for more expert advice brought to you by Floor and Decor Bailey's Crossroads. A lot of people tolerate ordinary. Ordinary bathrooms, kitchens, entryways. Well, not on your watch. If you're a pro, you've got a new partner in town. Floor and Decor. From tile to wood to stone, Floor and Decor has more styles and job lot quantities of Schluter, Mape, Ladacrete, and other brands pros trust. Come see a whole new way to wow with Floor and Decor. Coming soon to Bailey's Crossroads. <laughs>